the output of photovoltaic cells in 2020 was 760 gigawatts. That's the same energy output as almost 600 nuclear power plants. And the potential of solar power is enormous. As a recent publication indicates, the entire world's electricity demand can be covered with house roof surfaces only. There was a total of about 200,000 square kilometers of space ideally suited for photovoltaics, enough to provide 27 trillion kilowatt hours of electricity. However, the biggest problem with photovoltaics is the weather and time dependence. Without sunlight, the cells are useless. Electricity is, of course, also needed when the sun isn't shining at night. So if we don't have a comprehensive energy storage infrastructure, then photovoltaics are absolutely not baseload capable. But that could change with a new technology of an American research team from Stanford University. With modified solar cells, it is possible to produce electricity at night, even when it's completely dark. A conventional silicon-based solar cell consists of two layers, one doped positively, meaning an excess of a positive charge, and one doped negatively, meaning an excess of negative charge. Without light, the charge difference simply equalizes, but with light, the electrons are put into an excited state. As a result, they tend to migrate back into the negatively doped layer. This phenomenon is used to generate electricity. With an outer wire, the electrons can withdraw and ensure a continuous flow of current. A conventional solar cell generates electricity when a light hits the photoactive area of the cell, which causes a flow of electrons. But at night, even with a full moon, the light intensity is far too low to get the process going. Although a voltage can be measured, it is too low to supply a technical device. So how does the Stanford University concept work? To understand the new technology concept, you need to understand this first. At night, a strange phenomenon takes place on the solar cell. The solar cell, heated to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 65 degrees Celsius, during the day, gives off heat. It cools down due to the lack of sunlight. But oddly enough, it's getting a lot colder than you'd expect. The solar cell becomes colder than the surrounding air because of the laws of thermodynamics. Heat always flows from the hot source to a cold sink, similar to a pressure equalization from high pressure area to the low pressure area. Or water always flows down because of the laws of gravity. During the day, light hits the solar cell and the sun is the hot source. The solar cell and the Earth's surface is the cold sink that absorbs the heat. But at night, a reverse process takes place. Space with a temperature close to absolute zero appears to be an ideal heat sink. The solar cell radiates heat into space in the form of infrared radiation. This phenomenon can be used in many ways, as it has recently been used to cool buildings. However, it can also be used to generate electricity. The cells become cooler than the surrounding air, which creates an airflow to the solar cell. But how exactly can the energy be used? How suitable is the concept for mass adoption? And how much electricity can really be generated? The solar cell is expanded by a thermoelectric generator. This enables the generation of electricity through temperature differences. The so-called Seebeck effect is particularly important here. According to this effect, an electrical voltage is generated in a circuit made up of two different electrical conductors with a temperature difference between the contact points. The expansion of a conventional solar cell with this concept is extremely inexpensive. The production costs for heat sinks and thermoelectric generators are in the range of a cent to dollar. According to scientists, an output of 50 milliwatts per square meter of the solar surface has already been proven. That doesn't sound very promising at first glance, because a decent solar cell delivers 4,000 times that energy, almost 200 watts per square meter. But that's not a final argument to shelve the research work. Theoretically, the efficiency can still be increased by a factor of 40 without any problems. The project is at a very early stage. With modifications, 2 watts per square meter shouldn't be a problem. Although the electricity yield at night is still significantly lower than during the day, the solar cell could supply electricity 24 hours a day, albeit at different levels of performance. This could save 1 to 10% of the battery systems needed to store solar power at night. 
That's a lot when you consider the simplicity and universality of this new concept. Perhaps there is much more hidden potential that has not yet been taken into account in the efficiency projection. It is possible that a breakthrough will be made here too, as with those of world record solar cells of the National Renewable Energy Laboratory. With a special but very simple method, it was possible to break all the efficiency limits that scientists couldn't believe to be possible before. Click the displayed video if you want to know more about the world record solar cell. Subscribe to my channel for free and never miss a new video again.